Oh, good morning again, everyone, and welcome to this Tabernacle Baptist Church uh, devotion. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again that we can come boldly into your presence, even though we are sinners, but we are saved sinners uh, through the blood of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And so we thank you that you are a God of love and compassion. We thank you for Jesus, who is our Saviour, and we thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our great helper and friend. We come before you with many needs today, but we pray that you will help us to study your word and to apply the truth of that word to our daily walk with you. So come with us now, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to read two short verses from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 15 verses 26 and 27. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. From the beginning. I can remember Many years ago, when I was quite a small lad, um, for those of you who know the New Bridge area, um, we used to go up to Kum Tumpin Park, the park as we always called it. Uh, it was a lovely place. Uh, you could play safely there in those days. And there was a lovely view of looking out over New Bridge. And one day, um, one of my older friends, uh, he was, I was probably eight or nine, he was probably about 12 or 13. He came to the park uh, and he had this huge box, uh, box kite with him, the biggest I'd ever seen. Uh, and I was really impressed with this kite. But I was even more impressed that in a separate bag, he had at least half a dozen huge balls of, of string. Uh, and uh, he got the, the, the kite flying and uh, he added uh, an extra ball of string, and then an, an extra one, and then an extra one, and the kite was flying oh, way over past the memorial hall. Um, and of course, uh, there was a gust of wind and suddenly, woof, the kite disappeared. I don't think he ever found it. Um, I'm assuming it went somewhere over uh, the other valley um, in, towards Cross Keys, Wattsville. So that kite disappeared. I always remember that. I was being impressed with the size of that kite and also with all those balls of string. And that reminded me uh, of the story of a little boy who was flying a kite. It was a windy day and the, the kite kept going higher and higher and finally it got so high that it, it sort of seemed to go behind a nearby hill uh, out of sight. A man passed by and saw the, the, the boy holding on to the string but he couldn't see the kite. So he asked the boy, how do you even know you have a kite up there? And the boy, without hesitation, replied, because I can feel it. Because I can feel it. Now, although we cannot see the Holy Spirit, we should be able to sense his work in our lives changing us into the image of uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and so this morning, um, I want us to think about uh, the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth. 
Now John chapter 15, where our verses are taken from, is part of what New Testament scholars have called the farewell uh, discourse of Jesus. Uh, it has been historically a source of Christian teaching, debate and reflection and its images, particularly of Jesus as the vine, have been influential in Christian art. Really influential, I should say, um, in iconogra iconography and art. So, um, we, we look at uh, chapter 15 and we see, first of all, that Jesus is talking in the first person. Although ostensibly addressing his disciples, most scholars conclude the chapter is written with events concerning the later church in mind. Uh, Jesus um, is uh, presented as explaining the relationship uh, between himself uh, and his followers, seeking to model this relationship on his own uh, relationship uh, with his father. So this chapter introduces the extended picture, if you like, of Christ as the true vine. The father is the vine dresser, the vine grower. His disciples are said to be branches, which must abide in him if they are to bear fruit. Uh, and the disciples are warned that barren branches are pruned by uh, the vine dresser. Uh, the chapter proceeds by comparing the close relationship of Jesus and his disciples to that of himself and God the Father. Disciples are reminded of the love of the Father and the Son, the love of the Son for the disciples, and then indicated, in, indicted to love one another in the same manner. Verse 13 speaks of the great deal of love as being uh, the willingness to lay down one's life for friends. And then Jesus speaks of being hated by the world, but he sees this hatred as fulfillment of the words in um, uh, Psalm 69, they hated me without a cause. Um, and in Psalm 35, it says, Neither let them wink with the eye that, ate, that hate me without a cause. So the chapter concludes by warning the disciples to expect persecution and promises the gift of the Paraclete, the Holy Spirit. Now, these words from the lips of the Lord Jesus uh, were believed to be spoken in the upper room where he met with his disciples for the last time before his arrest and crucifixion. After his resurrection, he would be leaving them and knowing that his, his disciples would be left in a hostile world that hated him and hated those who believed on him, he promised them that the Helper, the Holy Spirit, would be sent to them in order to give them the grace to carry on um, proclaiming the Gospel, testifying to him. Um, and this uh, truth um, is also mentioned in John chapter 14 and in John chapter 16. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
It is to your advantage that I go away, for I do not go away. For, I, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Well, the disciples could hardly comprehend, understand his words, uh, for they failed to believe that he was actually going to be rejected and crucified. And thus the promise of the Holy Spirit fell, for the most part, on deaf ears. Yet the Lord Jesus knew that his going back to the Father and the coming of the Helper would indeed be to their advantage, for the Holy Spirit would testify of him in a way that would bring them more understanding that, that, than that they ever could have had when Jesus was among them. He would teach them all things and bring to their remembrance all things that Jesus had said to them. We know that prior to Jesus' death, resurrection and ascension back to heaven, the disciples were unable at times to take in the truth he was presented to them. For example, in John chapter 13, verse 7, where we have the account of Jesus washing his disciples' feet, he said to them, What am I doing, to, doing you do not understand now? What I am doing, sorry, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. There was a spiritual significance involved in the washing of feet that they couldn't understand. But Jesus knew uh, that after uh, this, um, that he would understand, that they would understand what he was say, saying and demonstrating to them. Um, because the, the Holy Spirit would teach them all things. It is interesting to note that not only will the Spirit testify of Christ, but the disciples would as well. Verse 27 says, and you will bear witness. What does that mean? Well, I believe it means that the Holy Spirit would bring the truth of Jesus Christ home to their hearts, and then they would go into the world and bring the truth of Jesus Christ to others. Peter spoke of this in Acts chapter five, and we are his witnesses to these things and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Of course, these words also speak of the fact that it is the Holy Spirit who empowers believers in their witness for the Lord Jesus. When I say believers, I'm speaking of all believers, not just the disciples. For the Holy Spirit is given to every believer the moment they believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says in his letter to Ephesians chapter 1, In him you also trusted after you uh, heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Let's just go back briefly to that kite flying. Anyone who's flown a, a kite uh, will know that uh, they can feel the tug, the pull uh, of the kite on, on the string. Uh, and of course, um, sometimes it's extremely strong uh, when uh, uh, the wind gets up. It's a wonderful uh, thought, but do you know that the Holy Spirit is tugging on your life today? And he's tugging on my life today? And, and he's allowing us, first of all, to know that he's present, 
Uh, and secondly, that he wants us uh, to testify uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ in this uh, world that we live, this troubled world that we live. The Holy Spirit wants us to be active, to bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to others. And so we need to pray today that the Holy Spirit will be present and active in our lives, that we may serve Lord more effectively in these days. And of course, uh, as I always do on these occasions, uh, perhaps the Lord Jesus Christ has been speaking to you this morning. Maybe the Holy Spirit has been prompting you. And now you realize who that Holy Spirit is, for he is, uh, we believe in the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So why don't you just ask Jesus to come into your heart uh, today? Pray this prayer with me, uh, and I'm sure God will bless you. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. You prayed that prayer again this morning, either to accept Jesus into your heart or to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, may God bless you. Uh, I would encourage you uh, to get in touch with a gospel preaching church near you to speak to the pastor or one of the leaders and tell him that you've accepted Jesus into your heart and your life. And they'll be thrilled and they will help you. They will nurture you in the faith. And similarly, if you live in the Newbridge area, Please do not hesitate to get in contact with us at Tabernacle Baptist Church New Bridge, uh, where you'll be able to speak to our pastor, the Reverend Peter Cho, or indeed one of the leaders. And they again will welcome you and love you and help you and nurture you uh, in the faith. God bless you all this morning.